Hi, everyone, and welcome to our 2016 Trader Super Conference kickoff. I'm Vince Fora. I'm the head trader here at Trading Wins. And I just wanted to take a few minutes to tell you about this year's event. This time around, we will be having our event at the beautiful Four Seasons Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada on November 19th and 20th. For all the details, just go to tradingwinds.com forward slash Vegas. Now, in this video, you will hear from several of the speakers or, or, or the traders that will be presenting at this year's event. They will each come on and tell you a bit about what they will be teaching at the event. I myself will be talking about Renko bars. Now, I've been trading for over 30 years and have used just about every charting style out there. Um, but more recently, I've really become a fan of Renko bars and I've been working on a system that um in, in testing has has worked out very very well and recently especially in in today's markets you know with with the added volatility and actually with more recently the the sideways pattern in the index charts um this actually has been working very well and i'm, I'm really excited to share this with you at this year's event now a bit about Renko bars they're uh, unlike candlesticks or open high low close bars they're not based on time they're based on price movement and price action so uh what what you see here are what we call wrinkle bricks they do look a little differently than candlesticks uh, or your usual open high low close bars but what you need to understand is that for every brick here in order for to add a new brick you need a, a, a certain amount of price movement in one direction or the other the timing really doesn't matter you can go several days without having a new brick form or you can have several bricks form within the same trading session it all depends on the amount of movement so these are very very beneficial uh, not only to help you avoid the flat periods and only trade when the stock is actually moving. And when I say stock, I mean market. It can be a Forex pair, it can be a futures contract, it really doesn't matter. But the beautiful part here is that when uh, they do move, you'll be in that move. And not only that, but it's fairly easy to remain in a move. All you're looking for is changes in color. I will explain in detail how I trade these at the event, but just to give you uh, a, a couple of examples here, let's have a look at the Dow. This is the Dow Jones uh, futures contract. And I want you to, I, I'm gonna switch back for a second to candlesticks, just to put things in perspective here for you. If we look at this current period of sideways movement here right in here the most recent period which really is from the the beginning of september okay right here let's look at this bar here from september 9th now remember that date from september 9th to present look how many bars right one for every trading session this is a daily chart here of the dow future so look at all these days here since september 9th now when i switch to Renko, let me go back to Renko. And you will see, that look, when I hover over it, this bar here, if you can see in the bottom uh, uh, here, the date column, it's September 9th. So there has only been th three bars, and, and the third one hasn't completely formed yet. That puts in perspective just how flat or, you know, how, what a tight range we've been in on the Dow since September 9th. So... What this really does is help you avoid those flat choppy periods and gets you in only during the periods where you're actually seeing some movement one way or the other. Now, there are many, many benefits to trading Renko bars. Again, I will talk about all of them there. Let me show you a few examples here. And the time uh, frame that you're trading can vary greatly from one market to another. Let me show you a few examples. Let's have a look at a chart of Chipotle, for example, CMG, and let's switch down to a five minute chart, okay? And now these can, we, we can dictate the amount of move we'd like to see for each brick. So if we switch this to traditional, 
we get to select the box size here. So I've got it set to a dollar, one dollar. That means every brick is one dollar here. So in order for a new brick to form, the market would have to either trade a dollar higher than where it is now or a dollar lower before you would see another brick form. And there are certain stocks out there. Again, I will share a number of them with you at the super conference event, but there are a, a number of stocks that work very, very well with a specific price range. The other thing you can do, and, and what I do most often, is leave the setting as the ATR, the average true range. What that does is average out the pre 14 previous trading sessions and determines the range of movement, the average range from high to low um, during that period, and then uses that number, that figure, to form each brick. So if we look at CMG here, the average true range over the past 14 periods has been 89 cents. So that means each one of these bricks is 89 cents uh, in range, okay? So, um, but the key is to find a market that is very, very predictable and has some very, very nice runs like you see here on Chipotle. The easy part will be taking advantage of it, believe it or not, and I will show you how to do that. Now, you can also look at, say, the one hour time frame. Let me show you on the one hour time frame. Uh, you, you see, just a quick glance using Chipotle on the one hour, you'll see that the Average true range now has moved to $3.43, and it doesn't look very good, right? Not a very clean chart at all. Again, we can adjust that and clean it up, or we can focus on a stock that does a little better on the one hour, like NVIDIA, NVDA. Here, much, much more predictable. Very easy to identify the entries and exits. Very easy to stay disciplined and remain in a trade for the life of that trade much much different than regular candlesticks and uh open high low close bars you can even look at this on higher time frames something like a disney believe it or not and if you take disney and move it to a daily time frame using renko bars again we get some fairly decent runs here and again i'll be going through all of this in detail at the event it's going to be a fantastic event this really will be the trading event of the year we have a great lineup of speakers and uh, they all are bringing fresh new content that is relevant to today's markets as you know we will be holding this event right on the heels of the elections and that's going to be crucial um, the remainder of this year in the market is going to be super exciting and um uh, you will be in front of a group of traders, professional traders that have been doing this for a very long time and have a lot of experience behind them in all sorts of market conditions. So no better time than to get in front of them face to face and ask all your questions right after the elections. We will also be holding a private reception there where once again, you'll be able to have a drink and, and get a lot of face time with each of the traders. It's going to be fantastic. I really hope to see you there. Again, all the details are at tradingwinds.com forward slash Vegas. I really hope you can join us November 19th and 20th at the Four Seasons Hotel in Las Vegas. I hope to see you there. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul Mohinder and I'm excited to be with you this November at Las Vegas for the Trader Super Conference. I'd like to first start by saying thank you to Vince and his team for putting together such a great show and uh, such amazing speakers. I'm really excited to be seeing you and presenting to you and I thought I'd put together a few slides to talk about uh, the exact content that I'm going to be covering and what you would benefit from. First, let's start by giving you a little background about myself. I've been 22 years uh, into technical training, if not more, and uh, my focus has really been 
uh, equities I've been trading actively uh, not just the Indian markets the US markets and Australian markets these are the core uh, equities I look at uh, on a day-to-day -day basis uh, I, I manage my own trading accounts my own prop trading uh, that's really what I do for a living I'm not into the advisory or brokerage business in case you're wondering I am but uh, really trading is what I enjoy doing most and uh, which is why technical analysis is such a passion for me now a lot of you know me as the RMO or Mr. RMO that's because uh, the RMO is the Rahul Mohindar oscillator which is part of Metastock today uh, I developed the RMO system which was later on acquired by Metastock uh, I went on to develop the RMO ATM, what I call the Automated Trend Modules, uh, and a suite of studies. And these included what we call power screeners or live market scanners. So uh, that was some great technology we've put together. Uh, finally, uh, a lot of you have heard me speak at conferences, etc. But just to let you know, uh, I have been involved actively uh, even uh, training folks at uh, educational institutions including leading names in India uh, you know I've I've kind of worked with HNIs all over the world uh, trading desks brokerages uh, exchanges uh, you know in some of their training programs so I've had the good fortune of uh, interacting uh, in a lot of different environments but again my focus is really practical trading technical analysis uh, and that's what uh, we're going to talk about more as we get along. Uh, I am the director of Veritech Software in India. We have been uh, uh, partners with Metastock, eSignal, and you know the top companies when it comes to uh, technical analysis. We have a lot of education which rotates around our business and uh, uh, our focus has been technical analysis now for over two decades. Uh, some of you may have seen me on CNBC and CNN. I have been a panelist with them for uh, over 10 years here in India. And uh, I'm going to be coming all the way just to talk to you about some of my studies, some of my approaches to trading. And actually, uh, these are some methods which I've uh, not really spoken about too much at conferences. So definitely, it's a great opportunity, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, but what I'm really going to work with is to start by explaining to you how important some basics are. And when I say basics, it's about trader identification. We need to understand uh, what kind of traders are we. We we kind of get confused at times as to are we short-term trading, long-term trading, some kind of a definition uh, in terms of trading profiles. So I'm going to try and help you identify with that and uh, work on that one time frame or one focus with you. So whether you're a long-term trader looking at daily and weekly charts, short-term, looking at hourlies, or day trading with three and five minute charts, it doesn't matter which time frame you want to work with. It's really uh, the techniques that we deploy, the discipline that we deploy, and the fact that your ability to actually come down to one time frame. And the reason why I think this is so important is when we go back and look at uh, you know our past trading records most of the time if we have shifted from one time frame to another it's usually because you want some kind of a confirmation and often very often because you started losing money on one time frame and you kinda wanna back up with the other and you're just trying to extend a bad trade out so what happens is you start by thinking that looking at different time frames and multiple time frames one after the other is giving you confirmation but sometimes it does lead to confusion. So I'm going to talk about, uh, you know, how to synergize these time frames so that uh, we can trade better and focus uh, on selecting one. And finally, you know, when we take a trade, there's always this worry: Do I need to look at the overall sectoral index or the broad market index before we jump to conclusions? So I think this core basic as to identifying what kind of a trader are we. What's the time frame we need to work on? Do we need to sync multiple time frames? Do we need to sync indices in our analysis? I think these are all some very important questions we need answered. And uh, I'm going to use uh, that event to talk to you about some of these uh, aspects so that we understand why we're doing this this way. Now, when you build a trading plan, I'm sure all of you are fairly familiar with risk, reward, etc. What we need to understand is when we look at technical trading, technical analysis setups, we need to be looking at 
three real models. One is when the market's breaking out in terms of price, when the market's taking a little pullback giving you a continuation opportunity, or when the market gives you a trend reversal or a counter trend setup. So there are really three phases of the market we're looking at. And we need to look at both price and volume. Sometimes what happens is uh, traders look at just price driven indicators and forget the volume bit or just the volume bit and forget the price bit. So we need a blend and a balance when we're looking at this. So hit rate is again a very important factor for us. So you know we have traders who come in and say look I want a system that works 7 out of 10 times and 8 out of 10 times without really focusing on risk reward. Whereas what's very essential for us is for every dollar risk that we take, we need to make sure that we at least have a dollar fifty in terms of rewards. Because that way you ensure even if you were just 50-50 or 50% accurate in your trading, you're going to be on the positive side. Which also means to say that if you were just 40% accurate, and again I'm trying to be very pessimistic or practical uh, in my approach here, that just in case you have that set up which has given you only four correct trades out of ten, you still break even because when you're making money it's a dollar fifty, when you're losing money it's a dollar. So what I'm trying to get at is you don't just need good indicators. You need indicators which have can tackle areas of breakout, continuation, and reversal or counter trend. And you also need to make sure that the setups that you follow have a good risk is to reward ratio because without good money management backing the good technicals it might just fall flat and I can tell you the primary reason that we tend to lose money is often just the lack of discipline it's a lack of discipline of following our system and the reason why we lack the discipline is because we don't have the confidence in the system or we've not understood our system correctly or you may not believe that you are using the right system. So I need to talk to you about very clear focused rules so that we can understand the system, we should know our rules, we should know what to do if it goes against us and come out with the right trading plan. Now when you talk about breakout continuation these are the different kinds of areas we're looking at. So if you look right at the bottom which is really this area where the market is uh, where I've circled right at the bottom in that little pink circle, that's the area where the market's kind of reversing or counter trend buy signals may be approaching. We need to have models which can detect that. We need to have simple techniques based on price and volume setups that can help us detect those market lows when the market was at that 37 to 40 range. But as the market breaks out and goes to 42 and 43, that's where I have the little thunderbolt sign there, uh, that's when the market's breaking out and that's typically where most of the indicators would have definitely turned positive because the market's gone up a good 15, 20 bars and that's when some confidence steps in. So we need indicators with, which kind of hint to us of a counter trend reversal at that low area. We need indicators which identify these breakouts and then after the breakouts when the markets rally you have some deep corrections sometimes. What I really look at these corrections is an opportunity to re-enter or what I call a continuation type setup. So it's about identifying that the drop that you see is more a, uh, a correction and an opportunity for you to re-enter a strong uptrend. We need to have indicators which give us counter trend, breakout, and the continuation approach. And finally another aspect which we definitely want to work with is when the market gets a little choppy and sideways. So the little rectangle that we've marked there, you can see how the market stagnated in terms of price and time right between that 56 to 61 odd level right within that box and that's where the market tends to get very confusing. Confusing why? Because you're keeping on thinking this is looking topish, you're not getting very confident, you think it's range bound. So that's an area we need to deal with because that's where we often get a lot of our systems to give us whipsaws or bad trading signals. So to recap what we need to look at is counter trend, breakout, continuation approaches and of course we need to look at models which help us decipher that we're in a sideways market and work to some kind of a plan right there. So if I had to get very granular into it, 
when you're looking at counter trend trading, you're really looking at selling when the market's rallying up and you're trying to top pick. Whereas a breakout sell would be when the market's falling down. You've seen five or six bars dropping and that's when some of the indicators start turning and that's when you typically get a breakout type setup. So it's important that we have a blend of both counter trend and breakout signals, which is why I'm going to talk to you about both these different kinds of setups. So in the presentation in Las Vegas, we're going to be covering both counter trend setups, breakout setups, and continuation setups, as well as addressing that area that becomes sideways and how best we can tackle that. So when we talk about the presentation, just to give you some quick pointers, I am going to be talking about rule-based approaches rather than a black box. So we have a lot of people who want systems which just give you uh, a one, two, three buy and a sell. But whilst we do have indicators which can do that, I want you to understand the approach and a certain what's my entry, what's my stop, what's the target, what's the risk is to reward before getting into any setup. So it's rule-based and not just a black box kind of approach. We need to understand multiple setups, which is why I talked to you about the ability to understand where the market's breaking out, reversing, or giving you a continuation type opportunity. And when I say a clear trading plan means every setup that I will talk about will have a defined point to enter it, stop it out at, and look at an exit plan. Now what are the methods that you can apply across any asset class. So when we're looking at some of the setups which we'll be talking about, I will give you examples with not just equities, but also with Forex symbols, as well as some of the options markets. Automated analysis and trade detection is again very important in today's times, because the whole day cannot be left to doing analysis. We need to focus on our trading. We need to focus on uh, you know, putting together decisions, working with money management and courtesy a lot of software and automation, we will give you some inputs on how to automate your analysis and automatically detect trades that meet your criteria. I'd also definitely like to share some of my inputs for those of you folks who trade options, but just in case you don't trade options for some reason, I think it's definitely a value add to know some of the opportunities that can open up there. And all the studies that I'm going to be teaching you or all the charts that I'm going to be opening are going to be live current data examples so that you get a real life perspective on what happened and what the current setups look like. To end it all, I'm going to show you some scanning models where how you would interpret different scanners that you can build and how you could get a simple setup to alert yourself as to whether you need to buy or sell a stock or hold on to a stock. So we're going to talk about scanning extensively as well. And as I mentioned to you, volume is again a very important aspect when it comes to our analysis. And we need to understand volume very deeply. And just to give you a bird's eye view, I think volume is probably the most important barometer of the market because it tells you how much interest the market has in a particular symbol, the kind of money that's involved at a stock at a particular price. It's a measurement of the weight. It's a measurement of telling you how important a particular price level is or how valid a particular breakout is. So volume really confirms uh, a lot of our setups, but we can use volume quite individually. So conventionally, we talk about volume as to a rise in price with volume as a confirmation. Well, that's great. It is. It definitely is. But then we need to break that down into practical application and find out, okay, how do I take a buy or a sell or get a very clear cut opinion based on volume? So we need to understand how we can use volume congestion or a sudden spurt in volume or uh, you know, a declining trend in volume is inputs in our trading. So we've got a lot lined up and I'm, I'm really excited to be putting all this uh, together for you. And uh, I would urge you to definitely come down and attend. You've got some great speakers, an awesome venue, and um, you know, it, it couldn't get any better. So thank you for uh, listening in. I appreciate your time and um, I look forward to seeing you at the Super Conference in Las Vegas.
Hi everyone, this is Anne Marie Band. I'm here to talk to you about the Trader Super Conference that I will be participating in with a lot of other really great traders delivering absolutely top notch information that's going to drive your career up to the next level in the trading space. What I'm going to be talking about is separating signal from noise and perfecting the art of trade execution. I've been trading for over a decade and this is the one thing that I notice as I exchange information with traders and they come and they learn what it is that we do here in the trading space. They know a lot about markets but not a lot about trade execution and since I trade for a living this is an ideal space for us to take all of the information that we've learned in the past and this present coming up that's probably going to be the most impacting for you and we're going to pull it together and synthesize that event and leave you with tons of power. Let me tell you a little bit about myself if you do not know who I am. Again, my name is Anne-Marie Band. I've been trading since 2005. I'm CEO of The Trading Book, but I've also written two books for McGraw-Hill. One, The Trading Book, it did very, very well. We wrote a second book called The Trading Book Course, which was filled with examples. You can still find those on Amazon. Traders at Work, I was actually featured in there. It says how the world's most successful traders make their living in the markets. Also, trading the best of the best. I've been featured in there, the Stock Twits Edge. I've also been seen in the Wall Street Journal, Forbes Magazine, S&P Capital IQ. I've worked with SMB Capital in their prop firm, and I actually still teach some stuff for them. You can look there. Uh, social media, you can find me on Twitter, StockTwits. I am a Yahoo Finance contributor. I'm an influencer on LinkedIn, been a money show speaker, market technicians association speaker. I have been very active in the space. You can see all of the things I write anywhere you'd like to look for information because I believe that putting my feet to the fire is the best way to prove out what is and what isn't, which is why I'm so excited about being here because it's the one space that I see a lot of traders need help. Before we jump to that though, I do want to remind you that this material is intended for educational purposes, that you can lose money when you trade and you should not trade with capital that you cannot afford to lose. Why can't I give you investment advice? Because I'm not an investment advisor. You have to have a license for that. You have to be called a registered agent. I do not do that because that does not interest me. What interests me are the movements of the markets, how people react to price, how price moves in all the different ways that it does, and all the different trading psychologies that affect price action and motion in the market. That is what excites me, and so that is what I do. All the publications that you see from the trading book are always illustrations and they're illustrations of my specific technical trading strategies at work. And so we put them right out there so that you can see does that work specifically and that's what I'm going to be teaching you. I'm going to showing I'm going to be showing you this, the specifics of that kind of stuff. So let's start talking about it. Separating signal from noise. Now what might that mean? Noise is just going to be information. And we are going to get information from a number of different spaces. It's going to build a knowledge base for us. And many of us have spent a great deal of time learning about the markets. And so this really gives us a very big skill set from which we want to choose from. The problem is that skill set gets so big it gets hard to choose. On top of that, we have news and media, all kinds of media, social media, which you know may or may not be news, market sentiment that comes out from other brokerages, and then powerful media like you know big news events or analysts that carry a lot of weight on the street. That can all be good, but it can also interfere with how we think clearly through 
a process. You know, analysts on the street are very often wrong. And the biggest news that we see out there about analysts and ratings and special ETFs and those sorts of things is that they underperform the general knowledge of the market space or the general space of the S&P, the broad markets. So what we have to think about is with all this knowledge base and all this media and interference coming from us, where is it that we lack the skill event? And it's really skill synthesis. We have to put all of that news in sort of a strainer and let all of the noise drain out and leave what's left up top as things that we can use to help make decisions. Now, in that space, we have to build a body of skills. Some of us are very fundamentally strong. And so we understand how to read a 10Q. We understand how to read complex financial statements. That's terrific. Value events, always important. But understanding your tools and understanding what it is that you can use to create an edge is really what's going to make you good in the market. And in the end, how we do well is not from sitting back and saying, you know what, That'll, that's going to go up. Many of us have the ability to do that. We'll go, oh, that's going to go up. Saying whether a chart's going to go up or go down is no reference on your skill event at all. It really isn't. The problem there is, yes, I know it's going to go up, but for how long? What happens in that space? What do I need to see in that space? Where do I get in? Where do I get out specifically? That's only going to come from practice. And we're going to talk about the mechanics of proper practice. What I see when I work with traders is that many traders do not want to use paper money to practice. It's like saying, hey, listen, I know I'm going to be in the World Series, but I don't think I'm going to go to the practice field. I'm just going to wait until I'm on the game field. That is a very poor way to look at getting good in spaces. I understand that you might feel it's for nothing, but you worked hard for the money that you're investing, and so you should treat it with that level of respect. And so I would say always, before we play, we've got to practice. How we practice is very, very important, and the level at which we practice is going to give us Consistent or inconsistent trading success. Here's the thing. People fail when they try to trade. And they fail when they try to trade because they do not practice the right way or they do not practice enough. Taking a look at perfecting this art of trade execution, there are some specific steps that all of us should engage in before we step onto the field. We've talked about practice a lot, but once, if we're looking at that space, how is the practice field built? We've got to look at the markets and assess them. How are they behaving? Are they range bound? Are they trending? Is the instrument that you are trying to work with or desire to work with, does it trend with the market? Does it move to the beat of its own drum? How are traders currently treating that instrument? Very, very important. You've got to look at it and be able to assess what's going on from price action. That gives us a sense of, hey, that's okay to trade. But we also need a reason to be involved in the trade. That's what we would call an edge. Where is it that this trade is going to give me an area that I will succeed in. What's it currently doing? Why would I want to be involved in the trade? Sometimes you might hear this. You might hear the comment, wow, that's a crowded trade. Well, 
I think probably the better term is that's a trade that's been going on for a long time or that's an extended trade. But crowded trades are actually very good. We don't want to be in a trade by ourselves because we can't lift the market. We don't have enough capital to do it on our own. No matter how much we have, if we're trading in liquid assets that can move in and out with, a, with tight bid and ask, we cannot prop it up on our own. And so we've got to figure out where these buyers are going to get involved and where we can get involved and where sellers are going to become involved and when we can get involved. Those are going to be our strategy choices. And trading strategies will absolutely depend on what you know, how well you know it, and if the opportunity to use what you know is sitting in the market at that time. Definitively. I can say that many traders that come to me do not understand how to execute trading strategy events. It is paramount that we understand where our strengths are, where our weaknesses are, and if the market is going to bear what it is that we have to offer. A lot of us know about risk. We know everyone who's worth their salt that teaches trading or teaches people about the markets speaks about risk. We must define our risk, but what is that? Interestingly, a risk event will fluctuate according to market conditions. If my chart is trending very sharply, my risk profile ends up being very small. If I get involved at the breakout space, that has retested and holds as solid, if I've gotten myself into a momentum space and I've got that proper assessment from where I'm going, when we enter that trade, our stop can be very, very tight. If we are sitting in a market that's got wild swings, our risk event is going to be much wider. If you don't have the stomach for that or you're not built for that, you have to step out and be on the sidelines. In order to take any trade and do well, you must assess the environment, choose the instrument, decide what strategy you're going to use specifically, and assess your risk. And if you cannot accept the risk that you see properly assessed, do not take the trade. A lot of folks have this fixed event. I'm just going to have a 3% stop. You can run into the market where you're going to get stopped out every single day because the market will not bear that kind of rotation. Trading the markets means that you are engaging with some of the smartest people in the world, some of the biggest machines, some of the most well-capitalized people on earth. It is intense competition and you've got to know what you're doing. If you don't, there is a graveyard full of traders who tried to step out and do it, but could not perfect trade execution. They just could not. They knew tons about the market, didn't know how to execute. That's the key point here. I'm going to help you with that because I trade every single day, stepping in and stepping out over time, you can see how well learning to execute, moving in and out, and being patient, no matter what your timeline is, whether it's days, weeks, or months, being patient in the trade is going to give you the results that you are looking for. Hope to see you there. Hi, I'm Tom Gentile, co-founder of Optionetics, host of the iHeartRadio show Wealth Strategies, and founder of TomsOptionTools.com. Join me on November 19th and 20th live in Las Vegas, Nevada, as I am part of the 2016 Super Traders Conference. You know, I've been doing this for over half of my life, yet I'm still finding and discovering new trading patterns. One of the best trading patterns that I have right now involves not even looking at the direction of the stock market. 
going into earnings season, but going into earnings season safely. You know, I have never seen anything as exciting as this, and I'm going to be teaching it live in Las Vegas at the 2016 Super Traders Conference. Let me show you a few things that I plan on covering while I'm there. And like I said earlier, I am a 25-year veteran in stocks, options, commodities, and currencies. I was the co-founder of Optionetics. Several books out there in print on stock index and options markets with my name on them. Um, I've been on TV quite a bit uh, over the last several years uh, on programs like CNBC, Bloomberg, Fox, Reuters. Uh, currently host of the Wealth Strategies Hour on iHeartRadio Network nationwide. And I'm the founder of TomsOptionTools.com. My strategy session for you at the Super Traders Conference involves the following. Number one, how we find earnings patterns with up to 100% historical accuracy. Number two, finding low-cost opportunities regardless of direction, but for no more than $2,000 per trade, often far or less. Number three, why we insist on taking profits within 10 days or less. There'll be a little bit of review at the beginning as I talk about the long call risk graph, risks and rewards, the long put risk graph, risks and rewards, and the long straddle risks and rewards. Now, here's the thing. Most people that understand calls and puts have an idea what a straddle is. The problem is, is that 99% of folks that trade straddles do it what I consider to be the wrong way because they do not involve other risk graphs they need to be aware of. For instance, we're going to talk about what a call risk graph is, but I also want to talk about what a delta risk graph is and how that maneuvers your option prices. All right. Also, what a theta risk graph looks like, where you want to be on this curve uh, in terms of option strike, all right, and the long call vega risk graph. Because once you understand these types of graphs, these Greeks, then you're able to get into what I call a temporary solution for trading long options and yet being able to negate a lot of the risks that you see on these three graphs. All right, so that's our plan. We're going to be talking about earnings. We're going to be talking about something called implied volatility. All right, and then I'm going to go through something called the earnings scorecard, where I am going to score with you all the results of my Q3 earnings. We'll talk about those. We'll talk about spotting the opportunity. We're going to talk about creating that low risk trade. We're going to talk about planning, executing, and managing that low risk trade. And then I'm going to give you the straddles to watch in 2017. You know, I've always said there's three things to consistency in trading. Number one, spotting opportunity. Number two, creating a low risk trade. And number three, planning, executing, and managing that trade. I plan on teaching all three of these things to you at the 2016 Super Traders Conference. I hope to see you there.